So we're about to walk round the um, round diamond on top of the storage ring roof. So we'll get a bird's eye view of all of the beam lines as we go round. So this first beam line that we're walking past is I-20, one of our newest beam lines that does spectroscopy measurements. So this spectroscopy is a type of range of techniques where you look for chemical signatures from samples. So you can tell about um, the presence of metals or other elements in your samples. So first you can detect them, see if they're there at all. And then you can learn something about their environment, their chemical environment, how they might be reacting with other types of, of atoms or, or elements around. So that's quite important for understanding processes like catalysis. So here we're approaching I-22, the non-crystalline diffraction beam line. So this is something that covers life sciences, physical sciences, environmental sciences, a huge range. B-22 is infrared microspectroscopy. So one of our non-X-ray beam lines. And this can be used to look at anything from polymer conformations through to early stage cancer diagnosis, looking at, at, at uh, cells. So we're standing now above B23, which is the um, circular dichroism beam line. So this tells you about how helical a uh, material is. So you think about a phone cord that goes round in a spiral. Well, how, how much that is made spiral, how well twisted it is, how unfolded it is, that you can tell using circular dichroism. So biologists mainly looking at how proteins are folding or unfolding or looking at fibrillation. So one of the things that's really important is understanding how Alzheimer's disease works. And uh, circular dichroism is proving a key tool for that. So this down here on the floor, which you may or may not be able to see, is our spare girder. So at the moment we're walking on top of the storage ring. But that's what it looks like on the inside, which you can't see at the moment. So it's a, a small tube under very high vacuum surrounded by magnets that focus and steer the electron beam going round the ring. And each time the electron beam bends, we get a bright beam of light coming off at a tangent to the ring, which you can see as we walk around here. And as the beam comes off, that's where we build the beam line. So the yellow hutches are usually areas where we have x-rays. And the white areas are control cabins or labs, places where all of our users do their experiments. So here we're entering a range of beam lines that all do um, techniques called macromolecular crystallography. So this is where we look at the structure usually of biological materials, perhaps proteins, to understand how biological processes work. It's very useful for um, drug discovery in particular. So understanding how these, uh, these biological processes happen and how we can treat them. So this is an area that's still under construction, but as we can see around at the top, all around the ring, we have offices where all the scientists and the engineers at Diamond are based, where they do their day-to-day -day work. On the lower floor is where we have labs and workshops that support all of the rest of our operations. So our users come and do all their preparation of their samples in advance or during their experiment in these labs and then just walk them across the hall to the experiment station. We're just above IO6, this is a soft X-ray beam line, so everything there is done under high vacuum. Um, so we're looking at sort of electronic structures of materials there. IO7, as we're now passing, is our surfaces and interfaces beam line. This is particularly useful for thin layers of materials, so coatings or paints perhaps, but also looking at how things absorb onto interfaces, so maybe a, a coating of some kind maybe looking at uh, detergents as well. Lots of different types of applications, I think. So this is our electrical stores. May look a bit of a mess, but this is where all the wires are stored for all of the building work that's going on. Eventually, this place will be taken up by some other beam lines, but at the moment, it's a store. So you can see here, there are the cranes going around. Well, they're not moving at the moment, but they're here. And you can see that these large pallets have been moved in and out using these cranes, which are very useful for construction during the beam lines. At the moment, we're still building some of our beam lines, so they're particularly useful, and you'll see some of that as we go round. I-9 and I-10 are some of our newer beam lines. They're still sort of under construction and in the commissioning process. So you can see here that some of the cables have started to be laid, but they may not all be connected yet. So they're just wiring up all of these cupboards, which will eventually be turned round. 
and put inside doors like we've seen elsewhere. But at the moment, they're still in the process of being connected. I-11 is the powder diffraction beamline. Um, it's able to look at the structure of materials, either with very high resolution in a sort of 15 to 20 minute time scale, or in milliseconds if you're changing something at the same time. I-12, our engineering beamline, is able to look at, at smaller samples, which are up to 200 kilograms, or large samples, up to two tons in their external hutch. And actually, this beamline goes out of the building to an external building which has a large loading bay, able to take in large samples. For example, a section of an aircraft turbine or, a, or an engine. I-13 is another of our, our longest beamline, which is going to be 250 metres away from the source, so, so way out out of the external, to an external building. And that's because this beamline does coherence and imaging. And so for the properties that we need from the beam to be able to do this technique, we need to be a long way away from the synchrotron itself. So it's been specifically designed to have ports and to have the pipe that goes all the way out. And all of the experiments on that beamline really take place in this external building. So I-15, beamline we're now looking at, is, an, is a called the extreme conditions beamline. And it's able to recreate the conditions inside a volcano. So we can look at extremely high pressure and extremely high temperature so that we can really understand how minerals form. I-16 is devoted to materials and magnetism. Um, they can look at very thin layered materials as well and we can start to understand magnetic structures. So one of the beamlines that's probably more suited to physics but answering some fairly fundamental questions. B16 is a test beamline. So we use that for testing all of our optics and for testing new types of techniques. It's very versatile. Essentially, it's the one beamline that does everything because you can swap all of the optics and all the detectors in and out. So we can try new techniques whenever we want. I18 is called microfocus spectroscopy. And that's because we use a very small beam so that we can track across a sample. So it's often used for very, very small samples, or so that we can do mapping, so we can work out where elements are distributed in a sample. B18 is called the core XF beamline, and that looks at spectroscopy as well. We call it a standard technique, but the standard doesn't mean that it's any less special. It's very good at what it does, looking at the structured materials. Beamline I19 is the small molecule single crystal diffraction beamline, which we looked in. It has, uh, takes very small samples and understands structural information from these. And that's the end of our tour. <laughs>